Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is an old, old friend of both the show and uh, in life and bodybuilding. And uh, he's one of the actually one of the first radio podcasts before they even called them podcasts to uh, debut on the internet probably over 10 years ago, Superhuman Radio. And he's still doing it today. And I want to get him here for a little update and uh, reminisce a little. Uh, I'd like to welcome Carl Lenore. Thanks, Dave. It's nice to be back talking to you. Yeah. You were, you were, no, Carl, you were kind of a pioneer in a sense. You were one of the first guys that actually uh, started doing a radio podcast back in the day. Uh, I think this, what, what did you start in like 2005, no, no, 6? Yes, November of 2005. It was actually the third week of November. So this, right. this November will be 13 years I've been doing this. And I started with Clear Channel. And you were one of my earliest guests. I had you on early in 2006, yeah. and we talked about some stuff that terrestrial radio wasn't discussing. You was you were still with MD at that point. Right. And I just started uh, with them actually. Yeah, and we 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 talked about some stuff that you know we talked about uh, uh, certain types of benefits of, from, from drugs and stuff like that. And I remember my producer like going, you know, you think you guys should be talking about this stuff? And I said, yeah, <laughs> the public needs to know about this. Yeah, well, that was the advantage of the internet. You could do that, you know? Yes, yes. I, I recorded my shows and it, as an MP3 right. on an external hard drive that I brought with me because I created a little website and I put the shows up on the website in the form of a podcast. But over the course of the next couple of years, I started to see that I was reaching a lot more people on the internet than I was here in Louisville, Kentucky <laughs> on that AM radio station. And that's right. when it became... Uh, you know, clear to me that, uh, you know, the internet was the way to go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and people don't remember back then there really was no video. There was no, YouTube wasn't really there. I don't know if it was there. It was in a very, very early uh, aspect of itself. No one did videos. Everything was, was audio. And you were happy to do it because it was uncensored. It was a lot of information you could provide. So the radio, the radio medium, the audio medium was, was the way to go, at least, you know, initially for the probably the first five to seven years, wouldn't you say? Easily, but I'll, I'll argue that radio or audio is still the way to go. And that's because while video, you can do some really cool, rich things with video. Right. It's virtually impossible uh, if you're driving a car sure. to enjoy video, but you can still listen to a podcast. And, Absolutely. So even when I do stuff on Facebook Live, I also record the audio. I'm sure you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I put that out there as a separate podcast, and I find that more people want to listen than watch. Well, we've been doing heavy muscle uh, radio since uh, I started RX Muscle in, in 09 when I left MD, and I had done three years of, of Noble radio over there, and I've never missed a week. So we still do those. I just don't. I don't really interview guests that much on the radio show anymore because I saved that for my TV shows. But you know what I do is I you know record the the podcast, but I also put it into video and I put it on our YouTube channel because some people like to only watch. You know, the YouTube generation only watches YouTube. They're not right. really into podcasts, um, but I do. I like you know. I like uh, using you know. I have an iPhone. I listen to all my podcasts while I'm driving, like you said. And you know, with my the new technology in the cars, they stream right to the uh, to the speakers the in the car. Yeah. yeah. And see, I, I I talked about that. So uh, when I first started going, when I first went internet radio, so I set up a Shoutcast channel. I bought a server. Right. And I got on Shoutcast and I left Clear Channel. And. I said, boy, I can't wait for internet radio to be a selection on, back then it was Blau Punk made the only one, it was called the My Roamer, that did AM, FM, satellite, and internet. Right. And that was the only way, now today, because of the iPhone and the Android, sure. You can listen to internet radio as easy as you can, satellite or, or terrestrial. It's amazing. Well, they, they got Android Play and, and Apple Play. You know, you, you, you get in your car, your car picks up your Bluetooth, and all of a sudden my phone is on my screen in my, in my, you know, my, X3, my X5 uh, BMW I drive around, and it's, it's got my phone in the computer of the car, essentially. So I can, anything that's on my phone is on my, my car, and I can listen to it through the speakers. It's awesome. It's like... I mean, what's better than that? I could drive probably across the country and I wouldn't get bored. I got so See, much stuff to listen and, and to. That, and that's the beauty of internet. internet so when, when they had satellite, the big selling point with satellite was, well, you could drive from state to state and listen to the same show. Well, you could do that now with your iPhone right. because of internet radio. Sure. The only, the only advantage that I, I see that satellite radio has is Howard Stern. That's it. 
Yeah. That's the only reason I even subscribe to it, because I want to listen to Howard Stern. So, you know, um, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but before um, I got sick and my life changed, I used to own an alarm company. And one of the things that we used to do was corporate security and background screening. Mm -hmm. And I actually did background screening for the Stern Show. I worked with Gary Delabati. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so like when they had that, like, you want to marry a porn star stuff? Right. We used to, we used to do all the background screening for them to make sure that the guy was a mass murderer. <laughs> that they were hooking up with some girl and that the liability would come back to the show. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't and, know and Stern, that. And Stern saved my life. Um, at about 1995, 96, I was diagnosed with a heart problem. And by 97, I sold the alarm company and got out of it. And I actually took them a year and a half off. And that's when I discovered physical culture truth. Oh, um, really? OK. Yeah, because I, I needed to remodel my heart. And all right. the research I kept reading was like bodybuilders and weightlifters, their hearts remodeled to what is considered a physiological standard, not uh, a, you know, a, a disease model. Mm -hmm. And so I started to focus on that. But Stern came to Kentucky, to Louisville then, on the Clear Channel station. And I woke up in the morning one day, and I was like, I know that voice. And so I got up every morning at, at, at 6 a.m. just to turn Stern on, and he got me out of bed, and he made right. me laugh, and I forgot how sick I was. And so he really, uh, he was a, a critical part of my recovery, believe it or not. I Interesting. Mean, people think that's crazy, but I listened to him for the whole time, and I would laugh all morning long. I'd go for my runs. I would go to the gym. It right. was wonderful. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, people tell me that. I hear that all the time. People say, you know, I watch your programming and sometimes I feel depressed. I'm suicidal. I listen to your show and I'm like, it just, it changes my whole day. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty powerful, you know. It the is, isn't it? It really is. I mean, yeah. it, 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 and, I, and I, we, I just talked about this yesterday. Those of us who find physical culture, we typically had something we felt was missing in us. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 I, and I have to say, um, those of us who grew up in the drug culture in the 60s and the 70s, we were trying to self-medicate and fix those things. And <laughs> physical culture kind of helped us uh, become worthy. And, and, but we ended up helping other people once we got into this. I mean, you helped so many people with your articles that you wrote right. and all that sort of right. stuff. And it's like, all of a sudden, you feel redeemed. And life really, it, that becomes more important than anything else that you're doing, that those emails that you get or those, those text sure. messages that you get that say, man, you really changed things for me. It's yeah. a wonderful feeling, it really yeah. is. No, you're right. Now, Carl, you used to do a, um, I don't know if you still do, that's what I want to ask you. You used to do a daily show. You still doing it daily? Yeah, I just got off the air uh, moments before you and I had to hook up. I, how, the heck do you, how the heck do you have enough topics every single week to do five shows a week? My mother said I took one deep breath when I was born and I haven't stopped talking. <laughs> No, I found I found something that I could actually leverage. When I would, most people would think I'm annoying, but on the air, everybody wants to hear me. No, I, I you know, um, I think that you and I share a lot of things in common from what I remember. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of person you are. You and I are fascinated by a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and that, and like like for us, because I'm going to be 60 a month. Wow. So I just turned 50. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> Time flies, man. It, I'm fascinated about how to be healthier, be stronger. Um, I, everything fascinates me, like you. And so it's easy me, for me to find topics. And I, and I have a pretty broad uh, palette to draw, to draw from. Anything that has to do with health, fitness, longevity. So that could be drugs, it could be food politics, it could be some new research, or it could yeah. be some guy who changed his life. And I bring him on the show and he talks about it, and somebody listens and they get inspired. Yeah. So there's always plenty of content. Really you know what my problem is, Carl? If I don't agree with the person, I, I can't I can't bring them on the show because I'm unless I unless I have it in my mind that I'm going to argue with this person about the topic. So I I'm very selective of who I bring on a lot of times because I, I don't want to give people a, a platform to talk about ridiculous crap. You know that I don't that I think is is, is pseudoscience or bro science. I, I, I'm the same way, and, and yeah, but you're open. More, you're more open-minded than I am. You you definitely let people give their opinions, but to a degree. Um, like I know I never have people on that want to promote the vegan diet because I think it's a dangerous <laughs> diet. It's good to do for two or three weeks if right. you want to just kind of like sure. give your digestive Detox. system a change. 
But I would never tell people to go on the vegan diet because it's a terrible diet and it's going to just, it's not going to make you healthier. It's going to no. make you sicker. Right. And so I won't have those people on my show. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, I'm not about ambush radio. I'll never have somebody on my show letting them think they're going to be met with a, a pleasant experience and then, and then, and then jam them up. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that, that drama kind of radio. So, yeah. it, but, but you, I, I'm selective. But also, I don't. You have a real niche too, you know. You're you're, you're bodybuilding first, and everything comes out of it. And I know yeah. that personally. You you're all about anti aging as well. Because yeah. We're both getting older, and we want to be healthy. That's right. But you know, it, it's a little easier for me to go sideways. Well, you know what I did? I created the, the show uh, Iron Debate for people who want to give you know ideas about what they think, but that, that maybe the other people don't agree with. And I think this way it could be, it, they know right off the bat that that's the person, other people on the panel are not necessarily going to agree with their opinion. So that makes it all right. Rather than, I wouldn't just interview someone one-on-one -on -one if, I, if I was going to like completely, you know, disagree with everything they said. Now, sometimes I disagree with some things that people say, but then I'll agree with other things they say. So, you know, I think that ideas are important to discuss like you do because that usually comes that usually leads to new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. Now what do you what do you have you seen over the last couple of years that, that gets you excited in the nutrition, longevity uh, field? Drugs, whatever? Well, uh, um, I think peptides are the most exciting thing right now. And the reason that, you know, you and I have known peptides forever. Yeah. You, you were talking about IGF-1 before anybody. I, I probably used it before anyone in 1995, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, but the reality is that the FDA has loosened the standards, the, not the standards, the controls on peptides. And there are now, as we speak, 36 pharmacies in the United States uh, that have been approved by the FDA. Yeah. Uh, create standards created by the FDA for purity, uh, and, and concentration. Uh, they have invested in amino acid sequencers and they are making peptides now that doctors are writing prescriptions for. And, and some of these peptides are pretty cool. I mean, BPC-157, thymosin beta-4, uh, 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 a modified growth factor 1 through 29. They're doing CJC-1295. I'm not a big fan of long-acting growth hormone secreted drugs because it's contrary to physiology. You know that. I know that. Um, but, but they're, they're, uh, G GHRP2, GHRP6, uh, one of the most exciting uh, peptides, in my humble opinion, mm -hmm. that's not being paid attention to is Melanotan 2. Um, I've been running Melanotan 2 at just 25 micrograms a day for a couple months. I wrote a blog three years ago about a study that showed that Melanotan 2 reduces intimal inflammation and causes the body to reabsorb plaque. Now. I'm a big fan of sunshine. Right. I'm not afraid of sun. I get in the sun as often as possible. I lay out in the backyard. I love the sun. You know, I'm Southern Italian. I get dark really, really yeah. fast. Um, but if you can't lay in the sun, Melanotan 2 potentially holds some amazing benefits. It, it increases energy expenditure. It reduces whole body inflammation. It actually stimulates four of the five melanocortin receptors. Uh, it can actually reduce inflammation in blood vessels and veins. It can reduce the buildup of plaque and reverse plaque. It's been shown to improve cognition. It's been shown to improve leanness. And you know, think about it, Dave. Yeah. Back in the days of Muscle Beach, these guys were laying out in the sun after they trained all day. Right. Long. What about blood pressure increases? I heard that they can increase blood pressure. Not at 20. Okay, so... Um, the, the, some of the leading scientists in the peptide sector today. By the way, Carl, when you first came on, I, I actually thought you were an African American. I wasn't really sure if uh, that was Carl. I had to like do a double take. Dave, I have people. I have a friend named Randy who's an ex-cop, and he's African American. He came up to me the other day. He said, "I didn't even know that was you." He said, "And I, you know, I mean, I put my arm up next to his, and I was just as dark as him." Um, you know. And that's because I have Ethiopian blood. I'm yeah, of course. Italian. You know, the war has invaded us. And <laughs> Me too. Yeah, anyway, I'm a dumps. Yeah, but but uh, the, the the really interesting thing about Melanotan 2 and these other peptides that I've discovered by a good friend of mine, Dr. William Seeds, is the chief scientific officer for the newly formed International Peptide Society. They are creating standards for what's going on with the FDA and these pharmacies and these doctors. Right. What he taught me was when you take a peptide. If you feel it, when you reach, you've reached the saturation level for, for your personal 
receptor sites. Yeah. So you're feeling the overflow that has no place to go. So if you take Milano 10 2, you feel nauseous, mm. uh, you feel your libido rise, you took too much. I'm using 25 micrograms a day. I don't feel it. It doesn't, do, I don't feel anything. And in right. fact, the tan I have is more to do with the sun that I sit in than right. the Milano tan. The same is true of the growth hormone secretagogues. Uh, the same is true of all of these peptides. If you feel them, you use too much. When you find your personal level, your personal saturation level, and you just use the little bits that you need, that's where the sweet spot is. That's where the magic happens. I, I agree with you. Because you know what? I, always t I found that you know, when I was playing around with melanotan a couple of years ago, I found, and I liked it, um, I found that when I used less, it, I did get tan, but it took a little longer, but I didn't get those nauseating side effects you know, that yeah. a lot of people report. Because you know I was using a lower dosage, but I was still getting the benefits that I was looking for, which was the you know which was the tan effect of it at the time. You exactly, know? exactly. I didn't even yeah. know that it had the other side of the other effects, like you said, like inflammation reducer or plaque reducer. What what's the mechanism that it does that by? Say that again. What's the mechanism that it reduces plaque by? Well, um, it because it is a profound reducer of whole body inflammation, and it makes perfect sense. If you look at it from an evolutionary perspective, we evolved for millions of years in direct sunlight. Every day we were exposed to sunlight. Right. It's only the past 100 years, maybe even just 50 years, that we become phobic uh, to the sun because of skin cancer. And I'll tell you where skin cancer comes from in a second. The sun is just an innocent bystander in skin cancer. But the, re the reality is that we evolved under the direct influence. Our genes were formed and evolved under the direct influence of sun. It makes perfect sense that it heals. Um, laying in the sun regularly can correct so many different illnesses. I mean, it's been shown, and it's not the vitamin D, Dave. This yeah. is the problem. So everybody attributes every all the magic of sunlight to vitamin D. That's not it. It's actually the melanocortin system. The melanocortin system is much more sophisticated uh, system in the body than, than anything that vitamin D can do. And that's why a lot of the studies that drove vitamin D's popularity were epidemiological studies where they looked at the populations that live near the equator and they go, oh, they don't have cancer, they don't have this, they don't have that. Right. It must be vitamin D. Then they do the research and they go, well, that didn't work. It's because they're forgetting that the sun does more than just produce vitamin D. It stimulates the most important hormone in the skin, which is melanocortin uh, receptor activation. And what does that? What do you think that does to the body? Um, I think that it reduces inflammation to a greater degree than anything that we've ever seen. And really? inflammation is really so. So there's a new study that just came out uh, that showed that uh, older uh, trainees who are healthy respond better to exercise and protein than uh, the ones that aren't healthy. And this makes perfect sense because as you age, the incidence of inflammation goes up. Right. And the analogy I use on the show is, if there's a fire in the frying pan in the kitchen, it's easy to take care of. But if the whole house is on fire, you're not paying attention to the frying pan fire. Right. You've got bigger problems. Yeah. But when your body is chronically inflamed, it's so busy trying to put out the house fire that it can't take care of the little things like protein synthetic response and stuff like that. Sure. So when you, when you lower the baseline, the noise in your body, with something like Milano 10 2, the body de develops a reserve for managing problems and it can do things better and faster, more mm. thoroughly. And that's really right. what it comes down to. Well, you know what they found also, you know, a lot of people say, well, you don't want to take anything that reduces inflammation because that will affect muscle growth because we know that muscle is responsive to the inflama inflammatory response that happens from chronic, you know, from, from acute training. But, you know, what they found that is with older people, is as the incidence of, of a, a chronic inflammation increases and increases and increases, at that point, they find that by reducing that inflammation, they actually do respond better to exercise because it's too much inflammation, like as you said. And, and I come back to my analogy. If the whole house is on fire, who cares about the frying pan right. in the kitchen? I'm not worried about that. That sure. frying pan represents the protein synthetic response for my workout today. Right. And, you know, there's obviously other ways, aside from taking melanotan, uh, too, to, to reduce inflammation, you know, be, between taking the right essential fatty acids and, and, and taking, like, you know, extra virgin olive oil, macadamia nut oil into your diet. Yes. You know, yes. eating yes. less inflammatory foods like fish and eggs, egg whites. But you've been, like but you've been, a, you've been, a, you've been a forerunner. And one of the things that I attribute to you is actually bringing healthy 
eating to a community that really didn't care about health, they just no. cared about gains. And you showed them that, no, no, when you eat a, a, a diet that is, is not pro-inflammatory, you get better gains. But you're really the guy who introduced that under the Palumbo diet. Right. Hey, you can build muscle and be healthy at the same time. Yeah, they're not, people think they're mutually exclusive. They're really not. You know, I just got off the, we just did an interview with Fakhri Muvarek and uh, he, uh, you know, he's having some kidney issues now. His creatinine is 10. Um, I mean, he's, he's theoretically in kidney failure, although he, his electrolytes are normal in his body. This guy left the hospital. They wanted to do dialysis on him. He's like, nah, that's all right. I'm going to leave. I feel all right. <laughs> I feel all right. You know, and we were talking about that. But, he, you know, he told me he has blood pressure. has been I, and undiagnosed blood pressure for, I think he had like, he was running like 180 over 110 for like years. And, and he just would forget to take his blood pressure medication. He never really addressed it. So, you know, and this is a guy who's giving advice to other people. And he's very good at his advice. And he probably, and he, he's telling other people to stop, you know, to take blood pressure meds. And he's not doing it himself. So sometimes... When you give a lot of advice, you, you start not listening to your own advice, you know? Yes, yes. And, you know, uh, kidney diseases are multifaceted. Uh, you can't just point at one thing. Uh, there's a lot of things that, I mean, the, the, the chronically high blood pressure could have been a result of, uh, of the kidneys failing or getting more resistant over time. Right. Uh, you know, so it, it's, hard to, it's hard to peg kidney problems with people. There's so many things that contribute to it. Uh, but go, going back to a peptide that has tissue regenerative effects specifically for the kidneys, thymosin beta-4, but it's got to be legit. But thymosin beta-4, I mean, two milligrams every couple, three days for probably three or four months and go get checked again and find out, wow, your, your kidneys are working a lot better. Keep doing what you do. How much do you recommend taking? Two milli about five milligrams a week total. You can split it up every couple, three days. Yeah. Uh, you know, people look at it and they go, oh, but that's so expensive. Well, you know what, then, you know, then do what you gotta do. Well, I mean, it, yeah. it's not expensive if it's gonna extend your life. Right, well, you know what the thing is also, a lot of people don't know what to trust out there because these peptide websites are not regulated. A lot of these guys who own them buy the stuff from China. Who knows what the heck you're getting. But now, like you said, with the American pharmacies making them, like I know, like yes. TitanMedicalCenter.com, they sell uh, BPC. Uh, you know, uh, I, what's the number? I forget it. The, the BPC uh, product. You know, uh, right? One fifty seven. Right. Yeah, yeah one fifty seven. Yeah. And uh, you can get it legitimately from them, and it's and it comes from an American pharmacy. So we know that the, the strength of it is hundred percent accurate. We know there's no yes. impurities in there, and that to me is is makes me feel a lot better to use that than to you know, kind of roll the dice essentially and buy something from an unknown peptide website, you know? And I agree, that's why I said the most exciting thing to me on the forefront right now is the legitimacy, legitimacy of the new peptide uh, market that's coming in. And I think what you're going to see is more and more physicians prescribing peptides for their patients and actually reversing disorders instead of masking them with, with the current pharmaceutical yeah. uh, model. And, and, and you know, so right now you can watch the evening news and you see um, commercials for these women. Oh, is your skin sagging? Well, you need Cerevital. Cerevital will raise your growth hormone 200%. Well, who cares? If you're 55 years old right. and you have no growth hormone, <laughs> doubling no growth hormone is still no growth hormone. Right, and right. So Pretty soon you'll be able to see commercials for, uh, you know, these anti-aging clinics are going to say, hey, real, real alternative, GHRP6 and, and modified growth factor 1 through 29 will raise your growth hormone to, to, to youthful levels, and it really will work. Right. Do you think that the, the FDA and, and the, the drug companies are going to allow peptides to be sold? I just don't see it, Carl. They're doing it now. Uh, we, have, we have a pharmacy here in Kentucky called TaylorMade. Uh, I know of another pharmacy that's getting set up right now uh, north of me. Uh, we have it right now. We have doctors prescribing. Um, Don't you think they're going to put, put the kibosh on this? Because No, I, I, think, I think the pharmaceutical companies are going to come in and try to find ways to make the, the peptides better. But these are drugs, Carl. These are, these, are based, these are not naturally occurring substances in nature found in some flower somewhere. Aren't they violating Deche? Well, now wait a minute. They are naturally occurring in the body, but you're right, they're not naturally occurring in plant sources. Uh, but they are, they are naturally occurring in the body. I think they're gonna look at them the same way they do a hormone replacement. I mean, look, 
none of the big players have jumped in to testosterone replacement. Right. I mean, but the, but the FDA is still you know letting it happen. Right, but, no, but, I, I, but testosterone is an approved drug. You know, there's you know BPC one five seven is not an approved drug by the FDA. Well, I, I, I would have to ask Bill Seeds about this, but. There is, uh, they're, they're able to off-label prescribe it right now, BPC-157. Doctors are prescribing No, I know they are. I, I, I get it from Titan Medical. They send it to me. I, I, I don't know. You know, I guess we'll have to sit and wait. You know, I kind of look at it the same way I looked at the cannabis marijuana thing. It's like every one state, two state, five state, nine state. Now you have everybody trying to get involved. Right. I think that, I think that when, when a, a category grows quickly, Enough people are attracted to it to create and pick up the momentum and run with it. I and hope. Maybe the, yeah, I do too. Because you know what I'm doing, Dave? I'm buying, I'm, I have an HSA, a health savings account. So I'm writing checks for peptides and I'm turning it into my insurance company. And <laughs> they don't know that it's peptides, they just know the prescription I had filled. Right. And I'm happy. And I'm getting legit peptides. Um, so what are you taking, Carl? What's your list of, uh, of stuff you take every day? Um, okay, so post workout. Post workout, I take uh, 100 micrograms of growth factor, uh, growth releasing factor one through 29, combined with GHRP6 in one syringe. Right. I take five IU's of oxytocin in another syringe. All this stuff comes from a pharmacy. Why do you take uh, oxytocin? I, That's a uh, oxytocin. I did a show four or five years ago. The love hormone. Show. What's that? The love hormone, right? Yeah, but it, it, for older guys, it actually causes your muscle to uh, repair like younger guys. Really? Oh yeah, it's magic, it really is. Um, so I take five IUs of oxytocin post-workout. I take my growth hormone secretagog, so that's two syringes. I take 25 micrograms of uh, melanotan two, and I take, uh, what's the other one? Oh, BPC-157. I take uh, How much? post-workout also. How yeah, much are you taking those, that? Uh, I take a half a milligram of BPC. Oh, that's a lot. 500 micrograms. Yeah. yeah. And, and then did... before bed, before bed, it depends. I'll take my thymosin beta-4 before bed. Right. Because don't forget, thymosin beta-4 affects the gut too. And at night is when your, your gut kind of heals itself and trims right. the flora back. And so I want it to be present in my bloodstream at night. How I'll much? Take a, I, 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 I'll take uh, two milligrams, one vial of two milligrams, I'll take that, and I'll only do that maybe twice a week. Oh, so you do the whole vial. Do you have to take that much of it for it to be effective? Um, the higher doses in research has been shown to be much more effective. Really? Like, like, like post ischemia reperfusion, right? You, you gotta have at least two milligrams to see the benefits uh, of healing in the brain and in the heart. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of like the physiological trigger dose. And then I also take three IUs of oxytocin before bed to make me sleep like a baby. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, here's, I have another uh, topic I wanted to bring up. What do you think about heavy metal poisoning in, in today's society? What, what's your thoughts on that? In general, in our, in, in our environment and stuff? No, like through fish and, 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 and just everything. It's got, it seems, I, so, I'm convinced that I'm, I'm heavy metal poisoned, but I won't go get tested because I'm too scared. I'm too scared. <laughs> no, you know, you know um, I actually take a supplement made by a company called Metagenics called Metalloclear. Uh -huh. But like, I'm not worried about fish at all. Uh -huh. um, and the reason for that is that every fish except two, hammerhead shark and tilefish, yeah. Every fish in saltwater ocean uh, have more selenium than mercury in right. their flesh. And selenium bonds to mercury through the methylation process, and the body can excrete the mercury. Right. Um, there's good research on the Inuit. Uh, oh, and, and uh, I'm sorry, whale blubber obviously doesn't have any selenium in it at all, but it has a lot of mercury because fat accumulates toxins. Sure. Uh, but, but when you look at, uh, you look at fish overall, I, I don't believe there's any real threat of heavy metal uh, poisoning, at least not from mercury. Right. But I think we have more to worry about from our produce, to be honest with you, because these are petrochemicals that they're spraying on conventional crops today. Mm. Um, their bioaccumulation could be worse. Dr. Anthony Samsell was the first person to point out the real threat of Roundup, of glyphosate. It's not cancer. Glyphosate is a synthetic form of glycine. Mm -hmm. It gets incorporated into tissue instead of glycine. So right. soft tissue, chondrocytes, all that sort of stuff. And the body can't get it out because 
The body has a process of breaking down and recycling and, it, and getting rid of old amino acids, but it doesn't work for glyphosate. So what we're seeing now is a much higher rate of something called amyloidosis. We heard about amyloid plaque in the case of Alzheimer's right. many, many years ago. Well, now we're seeing heart failure due to amyloidosis, which is basically the amyloid builds up in the tissue and it makes the tissue less pliable. It's called, it's fibrotic. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing amyloidosis of kidneys. We're seeing amyloidosis of heart tissue. And Dr. Samson was saying, it's because of the glyphosate. So what do you do? I'm a fucking afraid to eat anything anymore, Carl. I literally I have phobias. I want to eat McDonald's every day now because it's the only thing that I, I know what's in there. I know, I know. I feel the same way. I, I, it's like, it's anxiety. I get anxiety yeah. when I think about what I'm going to eat. I know. But you, you got you to gotta be but what about What about deodorants? Are those bad for you, the aluminum and deodorants? Yeah, I don't use, use antiperspirants at all because I believe your body's supposed to sweat, so why are you going to clog up? Right. Uh, so what do you plants? use to, to keep the smell down? I buy a product uh, called uh, Primal Pit Paste. It's basically uh, <laughs> coconut oil and a couple other oils. And that's it works? It. And, and, and that's it. That's it. I would it stink. It I would stink. I would stink if I wore that stuff. I'm Italian. I sweat. I can't believe it covers you up. No way. Dave, you, you know. You probably stink by the end of the day. People don't Dave, want to tell you no, that. No, no. Uh, Elisa will tell you. She'll tell. When I use the Primal Pit Paste, it works. And I, and I got, they're not a sponsor. I got nothing to do yeah. with them. And, 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 and I, my underarms stink bad when I do, <laughs> when I don't use it. You know what I mean? I, What's I mean, it called? I'm, right, I'm writing it down. I'm going to try it for a couple days. If my try wife it. kicks me out of the house. It's your fault. Yeah, there you go. Blame me. Tell her Carl did it to me. There you go. There you did go. you find it? Uh, my, my producer found it. Primal pit paste. <laughs> well, natural. Oh my God. So you rub it on like a, a normal deodorant, huh? Yeah, it, it comes in a stick like Old Spice. It's fantastic stuff. All right, send me the link to that, Tyler. I'm gonna, I'm gonna purchase some because I'm convinced I'm poisoning myself with that. What about hair dye? I'm, I'm obsessed with dyeing my hair because I'm losing my hair and, and, and I, I like to cover my head. Is that dangerous? I'm, I'm wearing a hat today because I get my hair cut and colored on Friday. I, I currently look like Grandpa Munster if I take the hat off. <laughs> so I, I'm with you on this one. You know, um, I do it. And you know what? I, you know, so I'm like you. And I know that I've heard you say about the 80-20 rule when you're talking about diet to your clients and stuff yeah. like that. I'm the same way. Look, there's certain things I'm militant about. And some things I go, ah, what am I going to do? Right. You know, I'm vain. I'm vain. I don't want to look. My face looks terrible. But at least my hair can look like Antonio <laughs> Barrett. Barrett. Well, you got hair. That's good. You know, you have hair, actually. Yeah, I dye it. I dye Do you, it. Is there anything you could take to, 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 to you know, bind up these, these metals or these, these poisons that they're putting on the vegetables? Is there anything you could take supplement-wise? No, but you know what you can do, Dave? So first of all, you know, as well as I do, that fat cells attract the, uh, the, the, the toxins that you come in contact with. They become like time capsules. Yeah. So number one... Lose as much body fat as possible and stay leaner. Number two, make sure to get plenty of fat in your diet right. because the toxins will be attracted to the fat in the digestive tract. It's right. going to stored the fat in your body so it can ride the brown train out and you, you, you're not absorbing it. Right. And the lastly, I donate blood every two months. I'm okay. a huge believer in planned phlebotomy. Uh -huh. a, a planned phlebotomy causes the, uh, the more stem cells to be released from uh, the bone marrow, which could only be good and help yeah. you heal parts. But more importantly, could you imagine having a car and 60 years, the same oil in it? No. <laughs> so I give blood, and, and, and here's the funny thing, and I, this may sound a little bit like I'm a, uh, like I'm a dick, but you know what MDMS, uh, M, no, not MDM, MDSA, or M, 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 S, D, A, MDSA, it's a, it's a chelating pill. Right. And you're supposed to take it, and it causes your body to release metals that are in cells. Right. So if I'm going to donate blood Tuesday, Monday afternoon I take it, yeah. so that I'm giving, I'm giving away the dirtiest blood, blood I could get out of my body. Does that, will get, will, what if you take that stuff, will that release it from your body, though? Yeah, but see, that's the problem with it. So, so people take these uh, chelating agents. Right. But 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 they just they just they're floating around in your blood. They're just gonna find someplace else to store. Uh, That's why I do it the day before I get blood. I like that technique. What do you take? What's the name of the pill? What's that? What's the name of the pill you take? The chelating pill? Uh, it's, it's called MDSA. That's, it's, it's an acronym. It's uh, MDSA. It's a chelating 
uh, product that they give to people who have tested positive for high metal content in their, in their body. Is it like EDTA, similar to that? Yeah, I mean, the letters are, but no, yeah. EDSA, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, that's, that's a good I idea. Take that day, I take that the day before, and you know, I've talked about, you know, detox, right, uh, on the show. Uh, detox is a scam because all the detox companies, they, they tell you, drink this, or right. take this pill, or eat this diet, mm -hmm. and, and I say, yeah, it, it may get you to eliminate the stuff that's in your digestive tract. Right. But it's not going to, it's not like a, a dog whistle where it's going, hey, all the toxins in the body come out of the, the fat cells and mm -hmm. come on down here because we're going we're gonna to take a ride out. Because if it did that, you'd end up in the hospital with toxic shock syndrome. If everything that right. you've stored for the past 20 years in fat cells came out one afternoon, right. you're dead. You're dead. Well, that's so, why I tell people you got to do it slowly over, over the course of a, you know, a, a longer period of time. But that's why you have to give blood. So the, the blood process in cells is osmotic. You know that. Higher density, lower density, move, things move across the gradient. So when you donate blood and clean blood is made by your body, that's blood that can take up crap. So the cells go, hey, we got room out there. Let's put it out there. Right. If, if, you're, not, if you're not doing these things and donating blood regularly, yeah. all you're doing is cleaning the hallway in the house. You're never cleaning any of the rooms. Right. No, I agree with that. I think I'm going to start donating blood. I was doing it for a while back in New York. When I moved to Florida, I, I just kind of got lazy with the whole thing. I, I, I agree with you. I definitely agree. I think it's a good idea to, to, to definitely donate some blood once in a while. Not, not because your red blood cells are too high, but because, like you said, for detoxification purposes. I've never had a problem with ferritin. I've never had a problem with hematocrit. I mean, you, I, I, I've, I've done a couple grams of tests a week, and I've never had a problem with any of those things. I've always been able to donate blood. And, and I've never had a, I'm not a high aromatizer either. Yeah, me neither. I, I, I've, never, I've never used AIs in all the years that I've been using androgens. I've never used AIs. And the yeah. only times I have used them, they made me feel sick, so I just stopped. Mm. The only, I think my, uh, luckily for me, I have no body fat on my body, so maybe I don't have any place to store these heavy metals. But that's why I'm afraid that I'm storing them in my brain. Because I'm convinced I'm, I'm getting demented as I get older. I'm, my memory is failing. Now, I don't know if my memory is failing because I'm too busy and I don't get enough sleep because I have kids now or because, <laughs> because I'm legitimately getting old. You know, but that, that's definitely another yes. thing that people worry about. What do you think about uh, Alzheimer's and dementia? How, do you, how could you prevent that from happening? You know, that's a hard one, Dave. I, I, I've been very fortunate to have a, a, an astonishing memory. But I can't tell you, because I like to smoke weed once in a while. If I smoke weed two or three days in a row, I can't grab those memories as quickly as I want. Right. Um, but, you know, um, I invert every morning and every night. Um, so, so one of the problems with the aging brain, I actually uh, did a show on this specific uh, topic uh, with a guy named Wynn Wenger, who's authored like 87 books, and I think he's still alive. I think he's like 93 years old. Yeah. Um, we talked about inversion right so as we age brain volume gets smaller uh, blood vessels shrink and it's just a matter of not getting uh, uh, gasoline to the engine as well sure. uh, to all the cylinders so I invert every night I invert for five minutes I, I <laughs> literally hang from my ankles upside down right and I do it in the morning it's good for my spine yeah but I always feel better after I do it Mm -hmm. uh, I do it before I sleep because Win said on my show the best time to invert is before you go to bed because you'll sleep better. Uh -huh. I'm always looking at but sleep is the big one, Dave. Yeah, sleep I agree. is the big one. I, I think really I'm is. I think I'm sleep deprived. That's the problem. But you know what? You have said I thought I had a lot of rituals. You have so many rituals th during the day that you you must just go from one ritual to the next. I thought I was bad, but my wife thinks I'm crazy with all the, the vitamins I'm taking. I got to go here. I got to wash my face. I got to shave. I got to. I got to detox. I got to. I got to scrub. I got so many different protocols that I don't know what to do. You got double what I'm doing. But but it, but the, the nice thing is that Elisa and I do these things as a couple, <laughs> and that's really critical. It really really is because otherwise you're the you're the pain in the ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the one thing I'm very very fortunate. Uh, you know, I really didn't find my true soulmate until later in life yeah. uh, after my divorce. But Elisa is with me every step of the way. We go mm. to sleep at 9 o'clock every night. Wow. We get up early in the morning. We do cardio. You know, and it, and it makes it so much easier when the partner is on board with this stuff. Sure. Otherwise, you're right. You could seem like, geez, you, this guy's a real pain in the ass. Right? <laughs> no, she just thinks I'm, I'm, I'm out of my mind. That's all. I don't think she thinks I'm a pain in the ass. But although maybe she thinks that too. But 
uh, it, it, it's just, you know, like I said, you know, it, as we get older, we, we want to really, you know, we start becoming cognizant of, of the fact that we are aging and the body is not responding the way it did when we were younger. So you start to, you know, research and look into these things because it becomes more relevant. You know, my biggest fear is not that I live a long time, but that I, I, I'm, I'm non-functional while I'm alive. I want to I want to live like life to its fullest. And then one day I just want to not wake up. That, that, that's yes. how I want to go. That's how I want to go, too. I want to be fully engaged in life until the day my heart stops. Yeah. How, so I have to ask a question. I yeah. don't know if it's inappropriate. How's your dad? My dad is uh, is going to be 89 at the end of the year. Physically, he's doing pretty good. You know, aside from the fact that he's got some walking issues. You know, just because he's a little weaker now. But his 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 brain function. I mean, is uh, he's completely demented. He has no memory, no recall past 30 seconds, probably. Uh, he knows who I am, and he knows who our family is, and everything like that when we visit him because he's he's in a very you know he's like in a very high-end uh, assisted living place but and physically he's all right he just he just can't remember anything he has no short-term memory yeah it's tough so, you know it's hard it's hard to tease out what contributions our environment and diet over a lifetime has sure. to that and what contributions genetics have to do with that right um you know i come back to sleep no, nothing, you know, I, I, I you know, your, your wife would say you had a nut on the show. I have a pulse <laughs> electromagnetic field device under my bed that I've been sleeping with for probably 13 years. Oh, really? I sleep grounded, you know. Grounding is good, too. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to write a blog. You know, I did something stupid the other day, but I had to see for myself. I, I got in the shower. I didn't get in it, but I got my volt meter. I put one end in a GA, a, a, a grounded switch right. in the ground side, and the other side I put in the stream of water and it went to zero. Which means that when you take a shower, it grounds you're you? grounding. Wow. You're grounding. That's because good. Somewhere, somewhere in that water's path is metal going to ground. Whether I sleep better I, after taking a shower, I just do. I'm, I'm starting to ask myself the question is it, is it the stimulation? on the skin from the water or is it the fact that you just grounded for 15 minutes i and think it's the grounding is legit dave yeah i agree I was, work, I was working with quest last year mm -hmm. on a project and they got a dark field microscope and they had a couple of people in the company use grounding mats we did mm -hmm. blood before and blood after do you know what the rouleau effect is no rouleau effect is when red blood cells stack like, oh yeah like, like casino chip right okay it's not good. It, it, it could increase from both the robotic index. It, 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 it can actually starve off of small blood supplies and sure. so forth. So just grounding for 20 minutes makes the blood cells space back out edge to edge. It's crazy. I know. I know. I've seen that also. I've seen. It. Like, a, look, we could talk about this probably for another two hours, and maybe you know we'll do another one of these because I have a feeling this is going to be a very popular show. But um, Carl, I want to just thank you for taking time out and. Uh, if people want to watch your podcast, what's the best way? Uh, well, the website, superhumanradio.net. That's it. I mean, I'm on iTunes. I'm on Stitcher. I'm on uh, iHeartMedia. Right. You can search for the podcast there, but the website is superhumanradio.net. All right. It's Carl Lenore, good friend to the show, and uh, some great information he provided here today. And I'm gonna, I took my notes. You saw me taking my notes. I'm going to be adding a couple things to my obsessive compulsive uh, regimen that I have. And we'll have to get him back on a future show, maybe an Iron Debate. Uh, that we do on nutrition. For now, though, we're out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo with another excellent episode of Live With. See you next time.